go. Yep. Okay. Hey guys, uh, this is Manal, the head of DevSecOps for HBO Max. Uh, for those of you who don't know what HBO Max is, we're a premium streaming service, um, and we've been around for about two years. We, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of customers. I, I think you know when we launched, uh, I thought you know Netflix thought we were cute. I, I think uh, we've proved ourselves to be pretty strong players in this area. Uh, and I head off all of the depth at cops uh, for for that. So um, talking about governance as code day, uh, I think one of the first questions you get asked is uh, how, how are we going to manage a security program for, for a large company, right? Where you have multiple accounts, you have multiple players, um, you know, the traditional security model wants you to have manual remediation where, you know, you generate a lot of reports and, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you divvy out the reports to individual teams and you know put them on hook for fixing their issues. Uh, the challenge with that approach is uh, the time to fix. Uh, and by the time a lot of these issues are fixed, there is a possibility some of these issues could be exploited. That's the first challenge. Um, additional challenges, you know, these fixes tend to be a point in time fixes. So they provide a point in time security. They're not continuous security. Um, so the whole gambit is to kind of do a shift in paradigm and approach security as a proactive measure instead of a reactive measure. Uh, but there's always this fork when, a, you know, a security team has to decide, are we, are we going to are we ready for that paradigm where, where we're going to start, you know, automatic uh, automating remediation of of issues? Um, so let's talk about cloud custodian, right? Uh, you know, a lot of what you could do with cloud custodian, you could probably do it in some fashion with uh, some custom lambdas, uh, some in-house code uh, in an inconsistent manner, but you could still get it done, right? Uh, I think we picked. Custodian because of the improved development velocity. Uh, you know, Cloud Custodian is written in YAML format, so you could pretty quickly, um, you know, yank out like a new policy and deploy it in all sorts of environments. Uh, improved readability. Uh, not only security team is looking at these policies. We have Gordon's team. We have. Um, FinOps teams, we have uh, operations team. They're all looking and trying to see if uh, whatever has been deployed by the security team impacts them. And, uh, and in some effect, they, they might want to even leverage the tooling that's in place to deploy uh, measures to um, you know, effectively manage cost and manage operations. Uh, one of the other benefits that we found in cloud custodian is it's it's cloud agnostic. You know, you know if you decide to expand your cloud footprint in the future, you know you you still have that engine. You can still kind of run off of it and deploy a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's open source, so you you know you know what it is. It's uh, you're not sort of bound by uh, a specific uh, technology uh, by a specific vendor, and you're kind of paying them a ton of money. You kind of sort of open source, so. You can always manage your destiny. Uh, so how, how, how does it all work? I, I know you guys have seen a lot of talk today. Uh, I try to put it all visually up here. Uh, for, for us, the main selling point of Cloud Custodian is there's, we, we see it in two, two, two big sections. One is detection and one is remediation. Um, traditionally, a lot of effort by security team is put into detections. So they have, have all sorts of tooling, CSPM tooling, have uh, all sorts of guard duty scans and you know all, all sorts of config rules to uh, find out what's wrong with the environment, but there's usually no real measures to remediate them. Uh, and, and so I think Custodian gives you sort of like the whole package of being able to detect, uh, remediate, and additionally notify folks, right? Uh, so you know you, you could pretty much tag along with any of the detection methods that you would do on cloud. You can do 
anomaly detection with GuardDD. You can pick up, you know, CSPM level rules through config. Uh, you're, if you're trying to build an event-driven stack, you can leverage CloudTrail events, uh, and, and, and like, funnel through EventBridge and have, you have a nice event-driven uh, architecture. Uh, you can also run, as, as a cron job, you're pulling your environment every so often and you pick up something and you decide what you want to do. So uh, there's a lot of ways you can approach automation and gives you that flexibility. Um, additionally, Custodian kind of hooks onto many ways to notify. I think you guys probably heard, I think a bunch of other folks did Jira integration, but yeah, you know, the most common being Slack, emails, um, you can integrate with, uh, you know, Security Hub on AWS. So you you have that functionality where you can tag along with a lot of uh, or the counter tools. Um, you know what what does a sample policy look like? You know you're brand new uh, and you're trying to build some sort of policy. Uh, how how do you kind of navigate building one? Right. Um, so sorry to sort of. Uh, showed like the high level big big uh, big tags that you can sort of like want to fill in when you're trying to build like your custodian policy you know one is the name you you know you can have your own custom name whatever you want to call it uh you can go to custodians documentation there's hundreds of resources you you pick one and you'll be given an option of uh, what filters you get for that resource and what action you want to take and additionally you can define what mode that you want to run your scripts in. Uh, so you can pick, you know, a CloudTrail event, or you can pick uh, something off of config or something off of Security Hub, right? So there's different modes you can run your uh, policy in. Uh, and then, you know, once you run that, you obviously want to filter for that resource, you want to filter out the resources that you, that are that are of interest to you, so that's where the filters come into the play. You, you know, uh, Custodian has done a pretty good job with describing what filters are available for each resources, and you can pick those and what actions are available. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward policy building mechanism, and uh, it abstracts out all the complicated custom Python and Lambda code that you'd have to write to kind of get the same thing working, right? Um, Uh, this is just one of the many ways you can deploy uh, Custodian. Uh, I, I think this has worked pretty well for us. Uh, I, I know I, I heard a bunch of guys use different CI pipelines. So yeah, there's many different ways where you can integrate Custodian into your CI pipelines. And we, we decided to pick spot instances. So we're not constantly bearing the cost of running Jenkins. Uh, and when someone does a PR check-in, it kicks off an available spot instance, and we go ahead and deploy to uh, custom security lambdas to many of our AWS accounts. Um, and all of those lambdas, um, depending on the findings, they send the report back to a queue uh, in, a, in a central services account. And from there, we kind of go about hooking into different notification mechanism. Um, we run many to many mapping of our policies to the accounts. So there's a snippet of how you could do it if that's how you want to do it. There's, again, probably many other ways you can do this. Um, but yeah, this is the one that we liked because it's explicit. You can look at a policy and say, hey, I know it runs in these five accounts. Um, and so, yeah, you can define, you know, you don't necessarily want every single policy running in every single account. You obviously want to understand the account and account structure first and know what's running in those accounts before you start taking destructive actions. Uh, so conditions tag will probably play a pretty big role if that's, uh, you know, you're trying to run a many-to-many -many mapping. Um, you know, I think I saw quite a few questions on the Q&A. A lot of people are asking, well, I don't really have a dashboard. How do I go in and report, you know, uh, my findings? So I think the easiest answer to that is, you could just funnel your findings to Security Hub, right? This is a snippet of how you would do it, right? Uh, you would have a post finding um, block in your policy, and you pretty much define, you know, what you want to call it and what severity you want to you know, put it against, and 
you start following those to security hub and that becomes your dashboard if you don't have you know a consolidated tooling that can kind of have nice GUI and all of that. Uh, some of the curveballs to success. I, I, I think automation, any type of automation, if you're trying to have a really good automation, you you can't really get away, uh, you know, if you're not going to have an effective automation if your tagging standards are weak, right? If you don't know what your resources are or who owns them, uh, or what's the data classification of those resources? You can't really automate a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things, and and that becomes kind of dead weight, right? That becomes your tech debt, right? Um, so it's 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 important if you want to have a successful automation program that you go heavy on tagging. That's the foundational piece, right? Uh, when you run Custodian, what you'll find if you're if it's an event driven uh, architecture, um, it, it it can tend to be really fast, uh, and race conditions are real, right? So if you're building your infrastructure as IAC, and you have custodian running policies, you may have automations competing with automations. Um, and additionally, uh, there's there's gaps in sometimes how IAC works. Uh, Let's take an example of Terraform. It, you know, if you have a policy that says, "Okay, I'm going to look at these tags and make these decisions," uh, when Terraform builds the infrastructure, it builds the resources first and then goes back in and tags them. So your custodian may detect that resource was built without a tag, and may decide to not do anything about it or do some arbitrary. Uh, action. So race conditions are real. If, if you're going to automate, you know, you probably want to test. You certainly want to make sure you're covering the bases uh, and, you know, look at your specific use cases. Again, it all sort of boils down to what there's no one size fit, you know, fit all. You, you know, when you automate, automate wisely. Don't bring down your whole environment. Uh, you know, Try and have a many-to-many -many mapping. Try and be cognizant of the environments you're running in and what infrastructure is running there. Specifically, when you're taking destructive actions like bringing infrastructure down uh, if they don't comply with your security policies. Uh, so, you know, tag them. Make sure there's no race condition, and make sure you know you're not applying one policy to hundreds of your same account uh, without really an introspection. And that's pretty much it. Happy to take any questions. Yeah, I do have one question for you here. I'm just going to summarize the discussion. David asked, does SciCub automatically delete findings for deleted resources yet? That was a big snag for us. And Michael chimes in was like, uh, as far as I could tell, only for SciCub config rules for other types of findings, no. Any color you'd like to add to that? Uh, you you're going to repeat that. I'm sorry. That was a long question. Oh, sorry. Uh, does Security Hub automatically delete findings for deleted resources yet? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I haven't checked it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm assuming they do, right? They, there's got to be some sort of cleanup at some point. I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Okay. Just thought I'd pass that along. Any other, Any other questions? Let me just double check my multiple tabs here. All right. I think we're set. We really appreciate it. And uh, all right. See you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. All right.